I will be turning this into many projects in the future. Thank you. So this is about discovery and about a relationship that I've been in. Also one that I've been 100% in. I never skipped out of the relationship in the ways that she has. So here's my truth. I gave her two months of my life, of my time, towards the end there, seeking clarity in a complete fog of her own deceit and deceptive behaviors. Betrayal was just a middle name in it. But I felt like just another twisted plot in a game. Like I was just being used as a pawn. The way that you were able to shut me out with such ease. When I gave you unconditional love and support, a shoulder to cry on, someone you could depend on as someone you could always count on with ease I offered more than just presence I gave you a sanctuary within my own heart within my own life not just a home you could come and call your own as if nothing we ever spoke about mattered to you It speaks volumes. So now I know your silence was all just a cover for the lies that you had been spinning into our relationship the entire time. Furthermore, you used me, betraying the trust I offered willingly. I am not here to tolerate that kind of behavior. And for what reasons still remains a mystery to me. Wherein my heart's value in our shared journey that I thought I was weaving the threads into were of loyalty and devotion with every single action I took. Every promise I made kept building a foundation that was meant to withstand storms, not crumble under this deceit. But I'm not here to tolerate anybody's disrespect any longer. Your betrayals will not define me. It'll only fuel my relentless pursuit in discovering the truth because the truth laid bare in this is the only thing that I've been asking her for. And she couldn't give me clarity into any of the matters that I had within my heart at those times. And it's like she didn't even care in those hours what I would be feeling. She would make it so that she would be emotionally wrecked. While me far and far well knowing that anything that she could pretentiously show to other people as, as if she cared about me was all a lie. Bold faced, two faced, Double living lie. So, at any ways, my heart hurts. 
the things that I've been forced to thinking by her hurts worse than hell. So I want to talk about this deceit. Her lies flow so effortlessly. It stains the foundation that we've once shared together. It's as if this deceit just was her original native language. Able to weave in a web of lies, deceptions, betrayals, and of cheating that shrouds the once sacred spaces that we once shared together within our own chest's heart's cavity. The airport of her falsehoods landed, disrupting the sanctity that we had in our shared moments together. Now what remains but confusion and that lasting bitter taste of betrayal. I mean, what the hell could it have been that could drive her to undermine the intimacy that we, I felt, were building together? How could a person do that? The answers I find elude my mind. And the wreckage of all of these lies she tells and spins into the reality just lingers and lingers and it doesn't have anywhere to go. Like the cortisol caused in your body by stress. It doesn't have anywhere to go. It stays there, just lingering in between what once was and between us as a whole. The, tw the twisted deception that has infiltrated our connection runs so very deep and people need to understand that and it's time for the shadows to dissipate especially for the sake of the innocent hearts entwined into this chaos without knowing anything guess what I'm saying is that your children deserve to know the truth about you, man. Not just about my pers pursuit of clarity in this, for closure that I've been asking for for months and getting nowhere, but the manipulative games and the constant lies and the deceptive behaviors person wants to be able to shut off that quickly but all the while reeling you in people deserve to know that I've been put into a very dangerous position a dangerous position weaved by none other than the woman I was falling in love with was her actions wore a web of lies and even 
taking it upon herself to insinuate an encounter with my own friend. Lo and behold, my thinking, my thought process, was that she couldn't have just came up with that name in that fashion if there was no truth there. But I had already discovered the truth about somebody else. I won't allow myself to be shackled by the silences that people want to keep me in. A silence that conceals the monstrosity lurking behind this and lurking beneath the facade of a one of of what a once found love a once fond love even but just to shut off that quickly yeah i think i was not only a plot and a scheme but i think i know why you gaslit me to steal my keys or to rearrange my keys. Amidst the chaos, my commitment remained steadfast, offering nothing but stability and love, hoping to navigate through the storms with you, conjured before with resilience and compassion. But this unraveled my sense of self. In other words, she knew from the beginning how I would be just completely a mess and how she would move would be to say cause me to stop working come over cause me to leave cause me to go to and fro with every intent of just wearing me thin in other words she knew the fights that she would insinuate and create from jump she knew what she was doing and how to move to antagonize me to get me to stay or to get me to go away my devotionals that i made i guess i made alone The bonds that we have shared should have been held sacredly. And yet she chose this path of betrayal and manipulation, constantly lying and deceiving what we once shared. The weekly transgressions, the abrupt turn of elite alliances, it's all basically a calculated assault on the very essence of what we once shared and what I continued to bring into this relationship. My heart work and inner journey deserves more than to be manipulated and discarded in that fashion by anybody. Let's not forget the countless nights I spent fostering a sanctuary for our love, cultivating an environment of complete understanding and growth. And through my prayer life, this is the cultivation of my heart's value and my heart's work. Within Heartworks, no one has the right to treat another person this way, and especially after staking claim to this kind of heart work within their own life. It's about cherishing the shared moments that we've had together, being able, being able to laugh together and it means a whole lot to me because 
laughter is rare with me and it takes a lot to pull it out of me and I want to laugh I want to feel the joys that I deserve to feel I constantly injected into our relationship trying to foster this genuine connection based on love and mutual respect these weren't just hollow words these were etched within the sincerity and reflection in the many tears I've shed in moments of vulnerability throughout my whole history. I've bared my heart before you and letting you know the depths of these emotions, making your callous actions all the more incomprehensible with everything that we've talked through. So in the midst of my efforts to grow, to uplift myself and invest in myself for our shared future and for myself, your heartless betrayal blindsided me. How you could turn on me mo moments of vulnerability into weapons aimed at utterly destroying the very essence of my heart's value and the heart's value that I brought into this. It's a question that echoes through the shattered fragments of trust where I find myself questioning the sincerity of every shared smile, every shared tear, every confrontation, and anything that we shared together. My commitment to cherishing and building upon our shared moments was not met with reciprocity, but with a cold and calculated indifference. As I poured not just emotions out, but financial investments into growth. And I mean a lot of financial investments into my growth. And at this time of my life, our shared life together, and the weightiness of this heartless action becomes all the more apparent. Yet within this storm of deceit, my commitment to fostering a genuine connection remains unbroken. It's a testament to my strength and resilience. Despite the tempest, you've conjured to tear apart the fabric of our shared bond. How could you? The laughter, the joy that once defined our connection, our walks, and the many things that we would do together to share in that making of memories are now just echoes reverberating the pain bouncing off the walls of betrayal and reflecting the shattered pieces of a love that once was thought of to be so indestructible. So indestructible. I mean, just in the last 30 seconds of this video, I mean, you have no idea the ounce of pain. None. <laughs> All of the tears that I have cried and all of the tissues that just this last 30 seconds like I said took to create this is my heart's work and my heart's value and the salt of the earth should feel it the insidious insinuation that she put out into the relationship in the first place with a connected friend reveals a depth of a darkness that defies comprehension but automatically defies the relationship and the bonds that were sacred tarnishing the sanctity vowed to protect in the wake of shattered trust, tears become silent witnesses to the pain that echoes through the remnants of what once was. Yet within the storm, I find strength to rise above this chaos because of how it happened to me. <laughs> no, no more, no more. You do not get to get in my thoughts strategically to use my thoughts against me for your own pleasure and your own gain and especially not where I'm concerned with the evil that has persisted here so I seek clarity not only out of sheer my willingness to know and I deserve to know the truth 
When you're going up to somebody and you're asking them for months on end about something and they can't tell you, but you know it's there, you have every right to discover what got in the way of your sanctified emotion within your own bed and the sanctified emotion that you carried within that relationship within your own head. These tears are not just expressions of sorrow, but markers of resilience, reflecting the depths of my commitment to understanding the intricate threads that once wove our hearts together, and how so deeply they've been cast aside, with zero tears, zero remorse. My heart's value isn't diminished by your betrayal, instead it shines brighter as I navigate the path towards self-discovery and my own personal journey with heartworks and healing and using discernment to discovery. It's like I know who you are without you even telling me in my gut. When a Christian is praying for deliverance they're doing this as a means to exercise the demons that threaten the peace of mind that we once had. And now, after simply having been with her in this fashion, my whole life has been ruined. All of the time that I've been manipulated into believing that I could go there and leave my stuff behind, Sac sacrificing whole parts of thi things that I wanted to accomplish, not only in my own life, but in our lives together. Now stands amidst the wreckage of betrayal, each tear shed a testament to the genuine love that once fueled my commitment to building a shared future together with somebody that I wanted to encompass in my heart's value and in my heart's work. The pain is palpable, the echoes of broken promises reverberating through the co very corridors of our shared dreams that I thought we were sharing together. I mean, and I'm just gonna say for the record that I love in a way where I don't even want that person to die. I want you to be better so bad. Like, I want you to do the best that you've ever done in your entire life. And 10 exit. So no. Nobody needs to be thinking that I do not have right to discover the truth here. Where I clearly do. Her calculated actions here defied the very sanctified emotion that I brought into our shared space together. Each deliberate step she took left footprints on that sacred ground that we once treaded together, staining the very purity of the love that was woven not only into my life but into the tapestry of our shared existence, or into the shared existence of a love that I thought was profound or more profound than it was in order for her to do these actions. But cultivating those calculated steps, these actions tarnish not just a moment, but the very essence of my commitment to myself, to her, to everything that I was loving my life around at the time, turning the very profound love and compassion that I offered into fragments of a once unbreakable bond. Like, that is what heart work is about. And so, navigating that painful experience, my heart's value manifested through every tear and every shared joy, like, just becomes a memory then of a guiding light towards my self-discovery and healing. And it's just, if you ask me, it's just not right to do this to somebody. You should just be accountable to your activities and have to, you know, for months on end them asking me for clarity I want to leave you I was saying I want to leave you 
I need to know the truth about you, man. Where you just went a mess in my life and what you insinuated to be true. Something tells me that anything else you're doing is just a cover up to the actual truth. So you gotta go. You went all the way, all the way that far. So the only way to cover it up now is to go that much further. Furthermore, any guy in this, in this fashion, has to own up to more accountability within themselves digging into this because you've been caught in a lie. What else are you lying about? So, I guess the point here is just the fact that you owe it to me to be forthright with me if you're in this motherfucker because and I say it with such disdain in that way because motherfucker if you were to do the right thing if you were to do the right thing none of this would be possible none of this I think could have gotten this far inside of the emotional states that I've been in with my own girl so motherfucker if you're in this you meddled in where you didn't belong and how many years how many years you just threw away for some pleasurable pursuit and your own gains you owe it to me to prove that and exonerate yourself of this. Sorry, but that's just my honest to God's truth. Her attempts to silence me, to keep me in the dark, only to intensify my resolve to unveiling this truth. Leaving me for dead might have been easy for you but leaving without confronting the static demons contaminating our shared history that is unbearable the discovery I seek is not just about unraveling the twisted events but reclaiming the power and the truth that should never have been concealed from me to begin with I should have been able to ask you and come to you as a person that you portrayed that you cared so much for but internally I don't think you did internally I think not only you had plans but internally I think what you were doing with me was an absolute crime against me as a person and against my life as a whole. The values I held dear were not just disregarded but deliberately trampled upon. The commitment I offered became collateral damage to the wake of your calculated actions, leaving behind fragments of what once was whole. In seeking clarity, I reclaim values that were tarnished. I reclaim the energies that were stolen. I recognize all of the ways that all of this betrayal was meant to cause me to lose my, lose my mind, lose everything. Because it's the only way, only way to get me unmarred by the reality that was set inside of my heart and inside of me. And long before this happened, long before some of this stuff happened, so, you want to unveil deception in my life and play me out to be a complete f idiot. You have no right. None. My right to know the truth transcends the fear she harbors. A fear that speaks volumes about the uncomfortable truths awaiting revelation. 
And the reason I say this is because there is no way that she would ever have to have treated me this way if there wasn't some veiled secrecy behind her actions that would tell a significant tale about the kind of lying, cheating, manipulative, sociopathic, narcissistic bullshit that she became. I find solace in the laughter that once echoed through our shared moments together. So don't even take this as a hit against you or your character. Because I loved who you showed me you were. I loved that person. So amidst the pain, let's not forget the joy that was inseparable in a part of our most shared connections. The joy and the laughter that ensued a universal language once bridged the gap between the hearts offering moments of lightness and even in the darkest times we we grew fond of each other i'll hold on to the positive memories of joy if i have to move on with only that but embracing the strength and humor and resilience it brings to my heart's journey as well because I mean, for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, if it's just a fucking joke. Well, fuck, man. Let's all just fucking dance on my grave and fucking laugh and celebrate for crying out loud. Because that's where I feel like this is basically taking the level to. Only I'm not dead. I'm quite alive. So no, when I'm asking for truth, and you knowing, and, or her knowing far well, far well, that if this person didn't mean, and mean anything to me, she could have just told me. Months prior, I met somebody else, and I'm happy with them, and I'm sorry, but we, we need to move and go our separate ways and within that reason yeah sure cheat that's fine go be with whoever you want to be with but in the confines of this relationship it's already been talked about not only the lies and the deceptive behaviors running off in no time's notice to go do whatever it was that you got so strong for in the end. I think I have every right to discovery within this one. And I simply say that because when I was looking for clarity and you could give me none, but you took it upon yourself to string me along anyway, you decided to coddle me, even, and make me, and try and reel me back in to make me feel like I could trust you. And I, I couldn't. I couldn't trust you. Not the way I came into the relationship trusting you. Are you kidding me? No. So I think that this lie and this deceptive behavior would uncover a horrible, horrible truth. And it's a truth that I don't feel I deserve, but it's a truth that's there. Because if there's no other reason why he's in it, then my asking for clarity would have been easy. You would have given me that clarity and moved on had you not had alternative plans and using me for your own personal gains in this relationship. And there's no reason for you to come out 
this far to cause for an abrupt scene and leave unless you wanted to tell your littles that you are here and that you've been using me and the goodness of my heart to create a space for you to leave to and then just be dishonest with them as well either way it's a really shitty thing to do to somebody that brought in 100% loyalty and faithfulness into the relationship I mean, who else do you know that carries their own housework and like their house chores like with them because they drive so much for the woman that they're with? I mean, who else do you know that's gonna spend hundreds of dollars to get oils and good bath remedies to help people heal and, and get rid of these demons? And I would have those things on hand for her. Tooth brush, toothpaste, anything she needed, anything she could grab out of the refrigerator, anything she wanted, anything that was mine was hers. So I'm going to go through 10 life lessons revolving around this kind of tension within a relationship The first of being is that trust is fragile. The foundation of any relationship is built on trust. Once shattered, it takes immense effort to rebuild, if at all. Number two is deceit casts a long shadow. Lies have a way of lingering, casting shadows that obscure the truth and create a maze of confusion. Lacking clarity for your once fond partner even. It should mirror back to anybody who has any questions regarding this. To the who and the why and the where and the when number three is to value your own inner work and to value yourself doing heart works the work you do on yourself your own heart and your inner self is sacred it forms a shield against manipulation and the tactics used within deceptive behaviors. Number four, boundaries define respect. Boundaries are not limitations, but mere expressions of self-respect. Crossing them recklessly can lead to irreparable damages. Not only within that person, but within the realms of there being possible friends in the future. Wrecking this part of a man and making him, I'm not going to go giving my heart away. Never again, so readily. So number five, silence speaks volumes. The silence imposed upon you holds on to untold stories. It's a tool used to manipulate, control, and conceal the uncomfortable truths. Number six, seeking clarity 
not vengeance. So though somebody might feel threatened, my pursuit of truth is not an act of revenge, but as a means of liberating myself in the end. Clarity frees me from the deceptive chains. And so my asking for clarity is my asking for truth so that I have closure to walk away from knowing the absolute honest to God's truth. If you didn't have something that strong to hide Sorry, but I don't think that there would have been a way for you to lie to me like that. I don't think that there would have been an easy pathway for you to just treat me the way you had. But no, you used me for your own personal gains and you wanted to keep stringing me along. And for the reasons I feel I already know that you can't come out and say it. You can't come out and show me the truth. So number seven, demons can lurk in silence. Uncovering these hidden truths may reveal demons that threaten my peace. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand demons and you don't understand the evil that is at play here within the confines of our relationship. So confronting these demons head on is what Christians do and it's what they should do if they're fighting for their own prayers to be able to, to, to ask for deliverance. Deliver me from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And that's how and that's why my pursuit of the truth means absolutely everything to me. So in this we're going to give the Lord's prayer the whole thing. Dear Lord who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever in your holy name amen because i don't want to go on in a relationship with anybody who would do such thing to me lie to me and go behind my back so no the value i'm sharing within this i have every right to discover the lies and the deceptive games that have been played with my life my life Number eight is value shared devotions. Devotions shared within a relationship should always be honored and respected in and out of the relationship that you are in. It's betrayal, not only that damages but presents the very damages that stains everything that we've known about our past. And then it also stains everything in the future. And especially with a relationship as long as I've had. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about my own friend. So nine, power in taking control, reclaiming your power is not an act of defiance, but a necessary step towards self-discovery and my own healing. 
and in this for two months man I've been trying to heal trying to figure out what I have to do in order to discover the truth here and to know what I have to heal from moving forward and lastly number 10 the journey to truth is empowering embracing the truth to, to uncover or embracing your own journey to discover the truth it's a powerful act of self-love and self-preservation and it's also a declaration that your reality deserves that authenticity your reality the one that you were creating with your partner your reality the love that you were upholding and the sanctity that you were upholding to be left alone holding it in your hands crying knowing far well that she's been so emotionally removed <laughs> so emotionally removed it's a powerful fucking thing man so it can be quite challenging but I believe that someone could be questioning just what were your boundaries what were your devotions what did you do in your relationship I want to talk a little bit about this because there are sacred promises that we made sacred devotions transcended here promises literally becoming the bedrock on which we were to, supposed to share our journey together and build it number one was boundaries as our pillars of trust we pledged to honor the sanctity of our love by erecting boundaries that were fortified in the foundations of trust and honor and respect the boundaries were not limitations but rather shields protecting our hearts from the corrosive forces that could erode the authenticity of our connection together and secondly is honesty in a timely and transparent fashion a pact was made to be honest and transparent, not allowing these shadowies to lurk in, deceit, to hide around corners, or, or be within our shared existence together anywhere at all. We vowed to, to not withhold that kind of truth and that kind of painful reality because we realized, both of us realized, that that kind of pain is unbearable. Recognizing that timely transparency is the cornerstone of healing and preserving that trust if we're going to heal and be able to fix our relationship we're going to be vowed to this uh, boundary to be transparent in a timely fashion like you can't you can't wait and let it go on and on and on and drag it out and number three is emotional availability and open communication it was the commitment to being emotionally available at any given moment basically with any given question and just to maintain open communication throughout our relationship we ensured that our hearts would remain accessible to one another and that no topic was to be deemed too difficult to discuss to we were to be able to go into depths that our emotional connection could become a testament to our commitment together and so that is what we also talked about number four is no waiting for truths to unfold we swore not to wait for days or weeks to reveal any kind of uncomfortable truths and that we, we, we would reveal them on the spot understanding this swift honesty offers the opportunity for healing because we're in heart work to remove demons from our life and remove the evils that could persist inside of our lives and inside of our committed relationship our commitment to prompt disclosure was our act and our gesture of love giving the other person a chance to process it and overcome the pain caused and either decide from the pain whether or not they wanted to continue within the relationship or not and to be respected no matter what that decision is because everyone and i mean everyone has autonomy in any given relationship to go in any direction they want so long as they are doing heart work you can go and talk to any guy or you can go and talk to any girl of the opposite sex as long as you are doing the right thing this was also talked about 
Number five, no running off in moments of turmoil. Recognizing the fragility of emotions, we vowed to not run off in moments of turmoil. Instead, we pledged to face those challenges together, navigating any complexities within our relationship with resilience and a shared sense of responsibility there. Like if something is going on, uh, I expect you to be accountable to your activity and vice versa. I would expect that you would hold me accountable to anything that you thought was going on and to confront me with it before running off and making that feeling a reality to enhance your own life and do something that you shouldn't have been doing or you shouldn't be doing. Anyway, number six is enhancing the lives and progressing together. It was a commitment made to enhance each other's lives and, and progress together, regardless of where our relationship would go, whether through shared projects, personal growth, or endeavors aimed at uplifting one another. We pledged to become the catalysts for positive change in each other's lives, regardless on where our relationship was heading. It was a vow to remain in or out of the relationship as a strong uh, person in, in each other's corner and a strong friend because how can we be lovers if we can't be friends as the song goes um, number seven is important this is like the most important boundary in it is the sanctity of your romantic and passionate moments we had promised to protect the sanctity of our romantic and passionate moments. Love making was not just a physical act, but a shared communion. We would not be just having sex and we vowed to never allow it to deviate into anything mere phys physically and making it devoid of any kind of genuine love and compassion because that is not where we are trying to go with heartworks. We're trying to go and move into a place of genuine love and connectivity and not do a place of, you know, just being devoid of emotional stability and emotional gravity when it comes to these things. Number eight is also an important one, is that there, I have, in my, this is my personal one, I have zero tolerance for mischief. A stance for zero tolerance for mischief was adopted recognizing the potential harm that the mischief could inflict on our relationship. We vowed to confront any behavior that threatened the purity of our connection. And with me going through everything I was going through in my own health and doing everything in my own power to up my level and up my skills for the relationship and for myself, uh, I have zero tolerance for it. And I said that if I'm done, I want you to back off and leave me the fuck alone, which I said at my last job. And then on top of that, it was like, she wouldn't leave me alone. And being that I worked there and I, I couldn't get her to stop coming to my work and bothering me. I had no ability to form community in my job setting because of this. So I mentioned to her, fine. We can share our break, share, you can share my break together with me. But if you leave me in that, in that way after this, and you are not committed to me in that fashion, you owe me big time because this is harassment and you can't be doing this to me and it's intolerable to me. I felt like I was cornered into a position where I had to stick up for myself in the value where I should be able to go to work and have community and where I work and be left alone in my own peace to then come after work making my own decision to come and see you but that was like oh you're gonna go do something else or you, you, you're gonna go have plans or you're gonna go do this or do that when there was nothing nothing that she would have had to worry about so anyway number nine is respecting independence and personal growth. We acknowledge the importance of respecting each other's independence and personal growth. A commitment was made to support one another's individual paths, understanding that a healthy relationship allows for individual progress. And when they're taking time away, 
and when a person is taking time away you are actually doing the things that you are supposed to be doing you are actually moving forward with your own heart works and doing your own inner work you're not disrespecting the bond that we created with heart work instead you are you you are either acknowledging heart work or you're disacknowledging heart work and you're abandoning heart work altogether and if you do that it's basically going back to the zero tolerance for mischief thing you respect these you respect that i have my own personal life and that i want to go into places in my own life or you do not respect it at all and then it's grounds for termination of the whole thing which had already been ensued in my mind because part of your spirit really bothered me and now I know why so number 10 is a right to confront the spirits that misalign. We agreed that in the pursuit of self-discovery and our own personal health goals, each of us had the right to confront any perceived spirits' misalignments. This commitment was rooted in a mutual respect for each other's journey and the shared goal of fostering individual and collective well-being together, both within and without the relationship. Meaning that while we were together, we shared that and fostered that individuality. And while we were away, we upheld HeartWorks and also collectively fostered that well-being within our relationship. These vows and boundaries weren't just spoken. They were etched into the fabric of our shared existence. Just because we d did things, we did numerous things together to be able to continue to grow. So becoming becoming and having guiding principles that shaped the course of our relationship meant a lot to me and I don't know how all of this could mean so little to her but in embracing these promises it's just a set stage for a love that transcends the ordinary and that is what I was looking for and that is what I'm going after so a connection that stands as a beacon of authenticity and resilience with each other in HeartWorks and in doing what's right and continuing to do what's right so that you can continue to do better and better. And it's not to be in competition with each other, but rather to be in competition with who we were yesterday. Do you see what I'm saying? So this is no way, shape, or form as to be in uh, to be misguided as or be, or to be taken as something that's just to bash her. It's not. In fact, everything that I was working on within my heart's value was to do nothing but better her. And so I feel very strongly that I led her into a spirit that was happy, happier, and she used that. She used that energy that she gained from me to completely drain me of my own energy. So coming into this authentically, anyone who needs to know why, why would I stay if she would treat me this way? I stay because I have every single right to know the very truth. Not some manipulated lie. Not some added deceptive behavior to cover up the clarity. To cover up the many lies. Not to mention how broken I already was. So yeah, I have been making these to protect myself. I have been recording myself to protect myself in the event that I ever would need to use it for discovery. You know, when you come into something and you're authentic, you know, the travelator of destiny and time, the person that you're with, lo and behold, 
does not carry that authentic emotion anymore. But you have to question not only the reality that she's now faced with, but you have to question your own reality, the intentions that you brought in. Are they felt? Are they needed? Are they truly loved? Or are they just discarded? Yeah, sure, cheat. Cheat all you want. That's fine. Be open and honest with it. And say, I fucked up. I cheated. I knew. And I didn't mean to. Or I totally meant to. Whatever the case is, you be honest with that person. But within this, within this, there's no reason whatsoever. What so fucking ever that she would need to hide and cover up the lies and cover up the very crimes of deceit and betrayal and the pain that it would cause anybody to have to go through. So yeah, my reaching for discovery is a complete act of self-love. It's a declaration for me and myself alone in this. It tells me that my authenticity deserves to be met with an unwavering truth. Not only an unwavering truth, but the love. That hearted feeling deserves to be met with loyalty, with faithfulness, with honor and integrity. So anybody who's anybody that thinks that I don't have a right to discovery here has got to be fucked up. You got me fucked up. I had some things happen and it took me a mere hour or two. I'd say it took me about two hours maximum to reveal to you what had taken place. So why can't I get the same respect in return? And my findings is verbatim you wouldn't have something so bad and so hard to hide unless it was actually that bad and that hard to hide so indirectly but directly here I deserve to know the truth and anyone that thinks differently you can stay out of it you can see your way clear out of it. Because this is my life. I brought in my heart's value into this love life. My heart's value matters. I give a fuck less about anybody's heart's value that could do this to me. Just, just completely mess my reality up. Nobody deserves to be put inside that kind of mental confusion and that state of mind. Nobody. I just want to say something for the record. That Heartworks is really the stark reality of doing heavy, hardcore lifting within our hearts and it's to engage with other people in such a way that doesn't allow for hardened blackened darkened bullshit 
this is the only way where actual profound relationships can happen. And in this life, it should be many. I mean, it should be full-on communities that share in this heart's value. And it's not. So, I just wanted people to know that that is what it's about. So in this, it's unveiling truths, confronting betrayal, and nurturing that very hardcore, heavy lifting hard work. In relationships, there does exist a stark reality out there in the world, a reality where trust is a, is a sacred foundation and the sanctity of love intertwines with the emotional well-being of those engaged in doing this kind of inner profound heart work. It's a reality where individuals face the harsh truths of betrayal, deceit, and the profound impact of someone manipulating the sanctified bond that should otherwise be cherished and protected. So as I delve d deeply into the depths of these issues, I'm trying to unearth the raw, unfiltered truths that many are forced to confront and contend with. Look, in life and on this earth, we are in no way, shape, or form confronting the reality that we are faced with. So this is exactly what my intentions are and it is exactly where I am going. Too many people in this world feel like they can just get away with and do insidious things simply because legally they might be protected in doing so. But in the sacred spaces of heartworks, where God is concerned, it should be of the utmost value you take into any relationship. I don't care if it's at the workplace. I don't care if it's with your boss. I don't care if it's with your family members or anyone else in the whole wide world just going out there. I don't care if you're facing your enemy someone that would want you dead for lack of better terms or however you would say that but it's to confront those very hard truths in a way that filters people through a very confined restraints and system of doing heart work in order that they themselves know and can encompass that value that they can then share within a community. And I mean actually share it with that community. You don't get to just run off and be cagey around these people. The fruits of your labor will show clearly in your actions. In the sacred spaces of heart work, individuals basically have to commit to themselves that they're on this journey of self-improvement. It's going to happen in no other way than your own commitment because no one is going to actually do that work for you. That's why there is a lot of work in the world that needs to be done here fostering spiritual and ethical growth and bringing forth the best versions of yourselves into relationships should be paramount to you. And I think there's far too many that are completely emotionally callous and removed. Yet, there are those who, within their own hidden agendas, disrupt this very sacred process in and it of itself, in life in general. These individuals void, mo void of morality, inject this toxicity into the very essence of their partnerships. They'll act snaky, cagey, smarmy, and you'll be able to see 
because they won't be able to cover up and act 100%, 100% of the time in that same truth and integrity and honor that you carry into the relationship yourself. So it uses discernment here big time and it harnesses one's ability to utilize their guts, their hearts, and their mind's value and being able to connect them into formulating your truth no matter where that truth lies because sometimes it's a despicable act one that involves twisting genuine love and using genuine love turning that into a weapon causing emotional havoc and irreparable damages those who engage in such treacherous behaviors cloak themselves in that kind of deceit masquerading completely as a compassionate partner while secretly orchestrating a plan to betray that sacred trust and that sacred place the insidious nature of this betrayal extends far beyond mere dishonesty it infiltrates the core of one's own person's being shaking the very foundations of their values and their virtues and not just for themselves alone but for the relationships and for the courage to go into the places that they are willing to go to and the lengths that they are willing to take these things to in order to uncover those truths and to battle the demons because within your prayer life, within your prayer life, if you are virtuous and true and you honor these morals, regardless what religiosity or what spiritual background you have, if you have no moral compass and no backbone to be able to confront these things head on, and within that virtue it's a deliberate act an assault of the sanctity of the heart it's a breach of trust a violation of the very essence of what the truest connections in this world could and should represent consider the gravity of your situation the one who claims to love you who speaks of faithfulness and compassion being the very architect of your emotional undoing this this is what narcissism is about they craftily lead you into the dark shining all the bright lights into the dark while turning out the light professing love and safety it's just a manipulation to serve that at times and then it feels like you're getting stabbed in the dark in a sinister way a betrayal that cuts cuts deeper and deeper every day and deeper than any physical wounds could even portray So those with cold behaviors masquerading in the background and you have no idea what this person is going through, you really don't. This cold and calculated behavior, this emotional manipulation is a sinister dance with the demons that revel in the pain they inflict. This is why it's said that they do not know what they do and to forgive them for they know not what they do. 
but in this case, I believe not only the people do, but they are perfectly fine with their demons. They're spiritually unsound. And there is something awry about their spirit in whole. It's a lack of character, a moral bankruptcy that defies the principles of human connection. Any genuine heartfelt human connection would never do this to a person. The demons that play in this twisted game not only condone but thrive in the agony they create in another's heart. Literally thrive in it. These demons love what they are doing and confronting these demons is not only a right but a necessity within the Christianity and within the Christian walk. It's necessary to confront any lurking shadows in the darkness anywhere that they are and to go and move into it fearlessly. It's a call to remove that darkness that impedes the spirit's work, which it does, not only profoundly within our own lives, but within the lives that we share our life with. And to reclaim that profound connection and stand defiant in that face of deceit, it is a necessary declaration that time and space have no jurisdiction over the sanctity of that heart's commitment to the spirit of love and integrity to discover that honest to God's truth. Those who have faced this abyss confront it with courage, unveil those truths hidden in those lurking shadows, and let the light of genuine connection and unyielding spirit banish the demons that seek to destroy you in this. No. You do not get to destroy God's people. You do not get to destroy the chosen in this pursuit find strength in your stoicism and your christian walk and strengthen your trust with god let your resolve be a testament to the enduring power of a heart grounded in the values of love honesty and resilience and if your resolve is going to God, you have every right to know the honest to God's truth. May the echoes of your truth drown out the whispers of betrayal. And may your heart work be a testament to the unwavering strength of your human spirit. Because in that spirit, you thrive far more in your own heart than these people have ever been able to encompass in their own and seriously the work that these demons are doing in other people and getting away with thriving in it and loving it and living in it let them fucking stew in it plain and simple let them fuck off if they can't prove to you with actual hardcore evidence. Mm, fuck, fuck them. They don't give a fuck about you. Know your heart's value that you bring into the relationship. Excuse my language here, but this is a really rough topic. I'm grounded in my own heart's value when I go into something with somebody and I expect at least a moral compass coming out. If that's where you want to take it. Heading into winter. Going into. Going on to Christmas. And moving into a new year. Birthdays coming up. And plans. The, it's just so downtrodden. 
It's so heart-wrecking. Our English language can't even summon to scratch the surface of this kind of evil. Although these demons want to destroy you, I want to be the one to tell these people whatever you're going through. You do not shirk away from your responsibility to yourself, be accountable to yourself. Though other people might not be towards you or not show any respect of your humanity at all. The G's hard work here is to do what matters and to take it to the extremes of setting in your hardcore heart's value inside of a place in this world that is just beyond measure of how bad it is. How bad it is. So moving into the season, I hope you have blessed relationships and you have true heart-centered, compassionate times with loved ones, the people that matter to you. Don't spend it with the people who never did. You want to be callously removed like that. Stabbing people in the dark. And then as they're trying to heal and doing things as they're trying to spiritually grow, up their skill levels, do things that are hard to do and not easy. These are These are not easy things to do. Heart work is not meant to be easy. It's meant to make things easy within your very heavy laden relationships. For I realize going out into the world, a lot of people need heart work. So I'm just trying to lay down the grounds and the very foundational element that needs to be there encompassing you as a whole moving forward into your relationship. I understand the echoes of betrayal and what can be set in. I read enough to know that these are the very things that can lead a person. I mean, just innumerable things can happen. People can be disappeared for crying out loud because of just wanting to know the truth. So for a lack of better terms, it's just the fact that I've been put into a very dangerous position a very dangerous position. I'm gonna get loud now. Just to let you know. Shattered trust, the echoes of narcissistic betrayal. In the shadows of twisted games and deceit, where trust is shattered, the air is thick with deceit, navigating a dangerous position. Where faces wear masks, narcissistic betrayal echoes in every word, an insidious task. You welcome them into your home, blind to their intent, but now a fortress stands, and their entry must be vehemently pre-sent. Narcissistic abuse, a sinister dance in the fog, words become spells. Realities become distorted in a narcissistic bog. Our minds, delicate vessels, bear that weight fully, 
of narcissistic games that manipulate and what they dictate. A constant drain on our time, our resources, our very hardcore depths of our souls. Narcissists devour love, leaving an empty hole, wide open, vulnerable, leaving for more channels of abuse to occur. Gaslighting eats away at sanity's core. Words get twisted, thoughts get muddled, rationality exists no more. They led with love into the darkest abyss of the trail so profound, a venomous kiss. Confrontation is met with evasion and lies. The betrayer thr thrives wearing a deceptive guise. Accountability just gets tossed aside like a broken toy. A heart felt shattered. Left in the souls to deploy. Just what do you say when confronted with that kind of truth? Excuses and deflections. I slipped. I landed a mile away from your heart, honey. The narc's twist of words tearing love apart. I'm not even sorry I did it. After what you did, and I couldn't even confront you with what I was thinking before going and running off? Hey, narc. Fuck you. Narcissistic ass sociopathic creep. Closure denied. Clarity elusive. The betrayer's support deceptive and abusive. Plans are being made without you. In the darkness of what's happening in the light right in front of you. How could you even pretend to do heart work like that? Completely emotionally removed. I'd say it's a pretty heartless ass way to be, don't you think? A relationship dismantled. Deceit after deceit. And again and again. Covering up the long trotted reason of why you couldn't give them clarity. How long have you been emotionally removed? That pain, that hurt, that trust, now disproved. You have the right to heal, to seek the truth, to remove the static parties, these betrayers. I deliver these demons at once. And no hesitation, you remove them with no remorse. Remove them at once from your life. They do not deserve a seat in your house. For if they truly cared, phone call records, emails, all of this wouldn't be just, oh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go there. If I have to breach my privacy to ensnare my trust with you, hey, fuck off. If this long, of a relationship could mean that I could mean so fucking little to you that you could just shut me off with no remorse caused by a trust within a relationship that's gone so deceptive and so heartless you fucking pricks who manipulate you deceive people in this way fuck you who the fuck are you really for the pain you caused for the trust that you stole. In the aftermath of this shattered trust, I will rise, reclaiming my soul, my very heart's matter, severing the deceitful ties. If you can't give me the truth and honesty in some kind of form, 
phone call records would be perfect from your from your phone carriers but through narcissistic abuse you have no idea what confines that I've been let in and mind you motherfucker you've said and done some things within this as well causing for the aftermath of my own shattered trust so reclaiming my life is absolutely paramount to me in my walk with Christ. There's no more room for echoes of narcissistic betrayal in my life. Only the strength to heal and the love to prevail from the depths and the corners of those dark places of your world. You have every right to confront those static demons and remove them at once. But you also deserve to know the honest to gospel truth when you have vows and you have things set in place that allow for this to not happen. You actually have the conversation to do the hard work with them and to go through the hard work with them months ago that if there was anything that you have no right to hide it, be confronted, be right away. Like, time is of the essence here. You don't get to wait two weeks after. You don't get to wait two months after. You don't get to wait a year after. And then go and consider your love for that person when you've been so callously removed as to being able to even insinuate that kind of thing and that kind of behavior. So no, I don't care what I say online anymore about it because you fucked with my heart. You fucked with my heart. You fucked with my life. And you fucked with my mind in the worst ways. So either you have sound evidence, or the salt has been in the wound. And I will let it scab over and heal. And I won't let you rip it off and stab me again. I should have learned this lesson years ago. Years, man. My heart isn't just a fucking game. You fucking got that? My heart isn't just a fucking game? So yeah, hey, old white guy, you can keep moving, guy? I'm sorry to say, I am, and I'm very fucking hard, it's very hard to say, but yeah, with one of your friends, 30 years down the line, you see how it would feel, you put yourself in my position, man, man to man, the motherfucker that got in the sanctity of my relationship here, that man, Whoever you are, or the many you are, how you could go about your business from here on out, as if you have nothing to hide. Bullshit. Fuck you too. The only thing that you have left to do, moving forward, is be accountable to your actions. Be accountable. Be homegrown in the fashion of your own heart to do the right thing. The only way that forgiveness can occur here moving forward is by moving forward alone. Nevertheless, you have to be accountable to your own actions here. And without that honesty and integrity and showing that truth, you do not deserve whatever relationships you are walking into. You are abusing the very sanctified emotion that God gives you to give to a person. 
by doing what you are doing. So you wanna fuck? You wanna be a fuck? Fuck off. And you can fuck off for good. And that's my truth. Next one I gotta do really quick. It's just to prove how much my heart's value means to me. This is called My Queen's Dressed Up Like a True G. I'm rewriting the script. I'm flipping the pages, middle finger to the haters, breaking down the cages, resilient, profound, like a G in this game, building something real, no need to time, no need for the fame. My pride and joy, my ride or die, she's my heart works so deep. Reaching for the sky, Christian values dressed in the grace. Together we stand tall in the sacred of space. We're rewriting the rules, making the love our art. Straight up profound like a work of our hearts. Values. No room for the darkest, darkest of nights. And the love that's shining true. She's my queen, my everything, my boo. She's like a true G aligned with the divine Christian values. In every single line, dressed in the modesty, she's my queen in a world of chaos. Our love is serene. And people can see it. Because a love like that shines from within, staying true to the heart works like a boss, reshaping the confines, no room for the loss. In the dance of love, we're setting a tone connection so deep it's eternally known we're rewriting the rules and making love our art straight up profound like a work of our heart no room for the darkness just love that's true she's my queen she's my everything my boo in the face of challenges we stand tall together unstoppable breaking down the wall aligned and heart centered we paved the way a love so fierce that it won't fade my partner in crime, my confidant, in every challenging face we confront. Christian values like a guiding light in the darkest moment. She shines so bright, dressed in the elegant strength of grace, building a future in the sacred space of our hearts. Our love's value, a fortress against all the schemes, all the darkness that this world can create, compounded interests in our own stakes, in our own ways, and hard work values the, the dreams to turn into streams. So here's to us. A love so grand in this crazy world, like grains of sand, resilient, profound, rewriting the script. She's my pride and joy, it's where I belong. As the streams of our love flow into the valleys where they belong, building homes brick by brick, building communities, shielding our allies. Each brick a testament to fortress so grand, guarding our love against the forces, hand in hand. We rewrite the rules with every beat of our beating hearts. Crafting a love that's so strong, that's the true work of our art. No room for the darkness in the sacred space, for she's my queen, my everything, my grace. So here's to the love that can withstand that storm, that builds a sanctuary from heaven, forever one. In the dance of our hearts, we rewrite those songs. She's my pride and joy, it's for I belong. hear the church bells ringing and singing our songs and in the corners of nature you can hear all the birds you have no idea man like none at all singing our song of love crafting love so strong that we'd literally embed it in the salt of the earth The whole 
goal is to have a profound love that can't be broken. And that's where we're trying to go with Heartworks. So I appreciate you being here. It really means a lot to me to encompass the values of Heartworks into your own life. And I hope to see you on the other side of all of this, doing Heartworks of your own. I appreciate you all for being here again. And thank you. If you like this content, please subscribe. And if you have any Heartworks and Heart Matters of your own, please feel free to share in the comments below. It always means a lot to me and to create a community where we can foster growth in this area. So I hope you all stay blessed and have a safe day. Be good to one another and do the right thing and stay accountable to your love. our own scene a profound connection just like a dream rewriting that script no room for despair a love so deep it's beyond compare we're architects of a passion building bridges so high turning moments into memories reaching for the sky our love's a melody our hearts and the songs of our own hearts a symphony of emotions where we both belong moving forward and hand in hand in this crazy world we'll stand anything any kind of darkness that can move in anything a love so profound it's a work of our art our hearts compassion, our hearts belonging. A work of our heart is our heart's work. You're the beat of my soul, the warmth of my heart in the book of us. Each page untold stories of love and the tales it holds. Through the ups and downs we navigate the tide. A love so enduring we've got nothing to hide. With each and every passing day and every single breath that we take. A bond only grows stronger and stronger in the dance of our love. We both belong. Profound connections for getting ahead. We're forging everything forward. In the embrace of a love, there's no room for that kind of deceit and that kind of dread. Moving forward hand in hand in this crazy world, we will stand. A love so profound in a work of our hearts. Our hearts matter. You're the best part of my heart. What are you? The warmth of my own heart and soul. Through the storms and the sunshine, side by side in this journey of love, our spirits only guide with the resilience of our heart's compass. God, we chart the only way. The profound love, we're here to stay within every single challenge as a team we face. A love so profound in every single way, like a timeless dream. Brick by brick, building a future of our love so strong. A foundation, solid. As we move forward into the unknown, our hearts intertwine like the seeds be sown. In the gardens around our home. In the symphony of our loves, our stories untold. A tapestry of our passion as the tale so told. So here's to us a journey of love. But this love affair, beyond comparison, moving forward, come what may. Because in the rhythm of my love, I'll dance as I may. Story. And a profound love that I have for a heavenly love from above. Alright, I was crying here, but I just had to say it's the kind that's worth fighting for, and in every single way. And in every single way, you fight for that person and value them, their whole heart. You don't deserve my tears, but I am crying. And in this part, I was crying, just dying inside. How you could do that to somebody that could, that is just trying to up their skills, do everything in their power to 
do better things for themselves happen in a series of calculated emotional steps, I feel. So again, thanks for being here. It's really profound what's gone on in my life and I'm just trying to bring and encompass my heart's value into heart works. <laughs>